Hey there, and welcome back to my video tutorial series. In this video, we're going to be setting up an API backend using Node.js, Express, and Serverless. This builds off of the last tutorial I did, building a React Native frontend. In this tutorial, we'll build out the backend, and I'll also add a bit more functionality to the original React Native app so we can communicate to this backend. So to begin our project, I'm in a new directory. I created a new folder called API, and it's empty right now. And I'm just gonna go ahead and run npm init to start a new project. We can call this API, you can call it whatever you want. I just called the folder API. We can just flip through all of these. We don't need a git repo for now. You can put your name in here if you'd like. All right, that looks good. So if we ls, you see we have a package.json now, and that's great. So next, we're going to be initializing serverless. Serverless is what we're going to be using to manage our project, deploy it, load in environment variables, manage our resources, and so on using AWS. Our API in the end is just going to be an express proxy that runs through an AWS Lambda. If that doesn't make sense to you right now, don't worry. We'll walk through it later. For now, we just need to go ahead and set up serverless. So I have the serverless CLI installed already. If you don't have it, I'll include it in the description. But once you do install it, we can run serverless. Hit yes to create a new project. AWS node, we'll call this just API. Next, it's gonna ask you if you wanna set up your AWS credentials. And let's go ahead and select yes. Now, if you have an AWS account, click yes. If not, you'll have to go ahead and create one. So after you've gone ahead and either signed into your AWS account or created a new account, we go ahead and select enter. And it's gonna ask you to enter in your access key ID and secret key from the account that you just created. So go ahead and fill that out now. So after entering in those credentials, it asks us if we'd like to set up command line completion. We'll say yes. My shell, I use ZSH, feel free to change this to whatever one you like, and then just select yes. Great, so now we've gone ahead and set up serverless. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and take the files that serverless generated and just move them up one directory because we want these all to be on the same level and we can just delete this folder that it created. So next, we're back in our root directory in the terminal and we're gonna go ahead and run SLS which is just shorthand for serverless. And then we're gonna run deploy. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna look at our serverless.yaml file and it's gonna deploy all of the resources that we've specified in there. So this includes our Lambda function, which will inevitably be proxying all of our API requests to the appropriate place. So let's go ahead and let this finish deploying. So while that's deploying, we can come into our code editor I'm just using VS Code here, and we can take a look at the serverless.yaml file that serverless generated for us. Uh, the name of our service, then we provide the provider. We're using AWS with Node.js 12.x runtime. And lastly, you can see the one function that serverless generates for us automatically. And that function is called hello and we tell it that the handler is handler.hello. So if we go into handler.js, we can see we are actually exporting a function called hello, which takes in the event and returns a response. So in a moment, we'll take a look at the actual AWS console and see the Lambda function that this has generated for us from the command line. Lastly, if we go back to our terminal, we'll see that serverless stack was deployed successfully. We can see that the service API on stage dev, the region, and the stack. And most importantly, we can see that our function, hello, which we've already defined in the YAML file, was deployed. So let's go ahead and actually take a look at the AWS console to see this in action. Okay, so now we're in the AWS management console. You just need to log in with the same account you used to set up serverless in the first place. Now that we're here, I'm gonna search for Lambda in the services. And you can see I have one function here, and this is the exact function that serverless just generated for us. It's called API dev hello. In our terminal, we see it deployed API dev hello. 
So we can see one simple Lambda function here with no triggers or destinations yet. We can even see the function code, which is quite simple. It's the same handler.js that we set up earlier. If we scroll down, we can see environment variables, tags, and different settings for this Lambda. We're not gonna mess with any of these right now. The important thing to know is that from the command line, we can quickly and easily deploy our Lambda functions, any dependencies it requires, add environment variables, and really anything you would do from the web console here, we can quickly and easily do with one line of SLS deploy in the future, which will in turn check our serverless.yaml file, set up anything that we define here all for us behind the scenes, which is super convenient because now we don't have to worry about the setup of our services, messing with permissions. All we need to take care of is that we're defining everything correctly in this file and that our code works. So let's go ahead and dive deeper into this handler function. So now we can go ahead and set up this handler to connect it to Express. First of all, we're gonna need another dependency. So let's go ahead and install AWS serverless express. There's a few other packages that we can install over here that I like to use. We're obviously gonna need express as well. Let's get body parser as well and cores. We'll see where we use these all in a little bit. Next, back in our code, I'm gonna go ahead and create a new folder called source directory. And this is where all of our express code will live. I'll create a new file in there called index.js. And this will be the root file for the express app. We can go ahead and import express. Let's go ahead and create the app. And lastly, we'll just go ahead and export it. So we're just initializing our express server right now and exporting it so we can set it up in our handler. We'll add routes to this in a little bit. So next, let's go back into the handler and I'm just gonna go ahead and actually delete all of this code. First of all, I'm gonna go ahead and import AWS serverless express. We're also gonna go ahead and import the root express file, which will be in source. So next we can create the server that serverless will actually use. So call it server and we'll use AWS serverless express dot create server and pass in our app here. So now we can set up the actual handler itself. So we'll call it module dot handler is equal to a function that takes in two parameters, the actual event that's triggering the Lambda and the context. AWS provides both of these. Now we return AWS server express dot proxy and this takes in three parameters the server, the event, and the context. And now we are done with our handler, it's this easy. Next, we need to make some modifications to our serverless file so we can tell AWS about our new handler and have it respond appropriately to API requests. The first thing we'll do here is change the name of our function to something a bit more descriptive, call it app API. Next, we should change the name of the handler to handler.handler. It follows here file name and then the function name that you're exporting, which in this case was handler. Next, we need to go ahead and tell the function which events it should respond to. So in this case, it's gonna be HTTP events because it's an API. And we're gonna first specify a path. This is a root path of the API URL. And we need to specify the get method first. And we'll also specify cross origin. So next, we'll set up one more HTTP method to respond to. And this is going to be a path of proxy. And then add a plus at the end here. We can set method to any. And then we'll also set cross origin here to true. And I'll just go ahead and indent my YAML file here and add a colon. The way that these events are set up, this function app API is a handler that's set up to respond to any request that gets sent to it. And it acts as a proxy for any method we specify. 
first on the root itself if we need to get that, but then any other URL structure that's appended to the API URL, we will send it to this handler. Now let's go back to our index.js file in the source directory and add some things to our app that we've created here. First of all, I need to go ahead and add a few imports. Let's import body parser, which is what we imported earlier. And we can also import cores. So these two dependencies are going to be attached to our app via middleware. So any request that gets sent will be run through these dependencies. So first of all, let's go ahead and call and call app.use and we'll call cores and invoke it. So this is going to allow cross-origin requests in our API. And we also want to attach this middleware here for body parser. Body parser just makes the body of an incoming request already parsed for you. So we'll call body parser.json. Next, let's go ahead and actually create and set up a route so we can test our API out. In the source directory, I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder, user in this case, but you could call it anything you want. I'm just using a user example. Say, for example, in our API, we need to get user information. This is how we would do it. So I'd create a user folder. And inside of this folder, I'm going to go ahead and create another file and call it routes.js. Inside this routes.js file, we're going to have it in import express. Next, we'll set up our routes for this particular file. So I'll create a const called routes and call express.router, which takes an object where we're going to go ahead and set merge params to true. This merge params property is going to allow us to set up this child router so that we don't need to specify a full route when responding to a request, but we can just append it to the existing set of params in the route, you'd say. So you'll see what I mean in a second here. Now inside this file, we can attach as many routes as we want to this particular child router. So let's go ahead and just set up a simple get route. So I'll call routes.get. And the first parameter is the name of the route. So I'll just leave this as root so that if someone typed in the API URL and just did slash user, this is the route they'd hit. The second parameter is a callback function that takes two parameters, request and response. Request is provided by Express in each of the routes that we set up, and it provides information about the incoming request and would include things like the body, the method, and so forth. So inside this function, I'm just gonna use the res param and send back a 200 status with an empty JSON array. So whenever this route is hit, it will just simply send back an empty JSON array with a status of 200. In this route, you could send back anything you wanted, perform some calculations, get the user in question, and then send it back. But for this example, we'll just send back an empty object. In the rest of the routes.js file, you could attach more routes for this particular child router. So for example, if you wanted to set up a post route, we'd call the routes.post and follow the same pattern here. But for now, this should be okay. So our last step here is to actually just export our router. So we'll call module that exports equal routes. Great, so now we can go ahead and go back into our index.js file. In here, we're gonna go ahead and import the child router we just created. So I'll do this by destructuring it and renaming it so in case you have different routes, you can rename them however you want. So I'll call this user routes. <laughs> Lastly, we'll tell Express to use our routes that we just set up for any requests that match this URL structure so slash user. So anything that's slash user and beyond, we'll tell it to look at the user routes we just set up. Now that our API has been set up with a test route, we can actually deploy it to AWS. So in VS Code, I'll open up a new terminal and I will call SLS deploy. After your deployment is finished, you should get a response like this. And you can see we have two endpoints now, one for get and one for any. What we're gonna do is take the endpoint provided here, copy it, and I'm going to go ahead and open up Postman so we can test out this route. 
once we're inside of Postman, we'll open up a new request and we will paste in the URL that we got from serverless. We'll add slash user because this is the route we just created and we'll send the request. If we look, we can see we've got a internal server error with our API. So let's log into our AWS account so we can see what's going wrong in the logs. Okay, once you're back in your AWS account, go ahead and open up Lambda and click on the API function. Now, once you're here, click on the monitoring tab and click view logs in CloudWatch. Now, let's go ahead and take a look and see what the issue seems to be. If we see on the, here, we have one log stream. We'll click here and we can see undefined error, handler to handler is not find or exported. Okay, so it looks like there's a problem exporting our handler. So let's go back into code. And it, yes, it looks like we need to replace this module here with exports. All right, so let's save this file and rerun SLS deploy, and we'll give that request one more try. Once we've redeployed, let's head back into Postman and send the request again. If we send it this time, we can see we're getting a 200 back from the API with an empty body. So this is great, this is what we'd expect. So this has been a walkthrough of how to set up a basic Express API using serverless and AWS. I plan on doing future videos where I implement simple JWT based authentication of the API. And I'm also gonna do a video on how to make requests to this API in React Native using Redux Saga. So if you'd like to see those videos, be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching and I will see you guys soon.